The Cutter's Saturday Night by Robert Burns My loved, my honoured, much respected friend No mercenary bard his homage pays With honest pride I scorn each selfish end My dearest meed, a friend's esteem and praise To you I sing, in simple Scottish lays the lowly train in life's sequestered scene, the native feeling strong, the guileless ways, what Aiken in a cottage would have been, ah, though his worth unknown, far happier there, I win. November chill blows loud with angry sir, the shortening winter day is near a close, the miry beasts retreating, free the plough, the blackening train of crows to their repose. The toil-worn cotter for his labour goes. This night his weekly moil is at an end, collects his spades, his mattocks and his hoes, hoping the morning ease and rest to spend. And weary, o'er the moor, his course does homeward bend. At length his lonely cot appears in view, beneath the shelter of an aged tree. The expected wee things toddling stature through to meet her dad, with flitchering noise and glee, his wee bit ingle blinking bonily, his clean hair stain, his thrifty wifey's smile, the lisping infant prattling on his knee, does all his weary keoch and care beguile, and makes him quite forget his labour and his toil. Well away the elder bairns come drapping in, at service out among the farmer's run, some call the plough, some heard, some tend to run a canny errand to a neighbour's tune. Their elders hope, their jenny, women grown in youthful bloom, love sparkling in her ree. Comes home perhaps to show a brown new goon or deposit her sair one penny fee to help her parents dear, if they in hardship be. With joy unfeigned, brothers and sisters meet, and each for others' welfare kindly spears. The social hours, swift winged, unnoticed fleet, each tells the uncus that he sees or hears. The parents, partial, eye their hopeful years. Anticipation forward points of view, the mother with her needle and her shears, gas all clays look amiss as real the new. The father mixes all with admonition due. Their masters and their mistress command the yonkers all are warned to obey, and mind their labours with an ident hand, and there though out of sight to jog or play, and oh, be sure to fear the Lord all way, and mind your duty, duly, morn and night, lest in temptation's path ye gang astray. Implore his counsel and assistance might, they never sought in vain that sought the Lord all right. But hark! A rat comes gently to the door. Jenny, who kens the meaning of the same, tells how a neighbour lad came o'er the moor to do some errands and convey her home. The wily mother sees a conscious flame spark on Jenny's ee and flush her cheek. With heart-struck anxious care inquires his name, where Jenny Haffins is afraid to speak. Well pleased the mother hears, it's nae wild, worthless rake. We kindly welcome Jenny brings on Ben, a strapping youth. He takes the mother's ee. Blythe Jenny sees the visits no ill tain. The father cracks of horses, ploughs and kai. The youngster's artless heart o'erflows with joy, but blate and lathful scarce can well behave. The mother where woman's wiles can spy what makes the youth so bashful and so grave. We'll please to think her bairns respected like the lave. O oh, happy love, where love like this is found. O oh, heartfelt raptures, bliss beyond compare. I pace much this weary mortal round, and sage experience bids me this declare. If heaven a draught of heavenly pleasure spare, one cordial in this melancholy vale, tis when a youthful, loving, modest pair in others' arms breathe out the tender tale, beneath the milk-white thorn that scents the evening gale. Is there in human form that bears a heart, a wretch, 
a villain lost to love and truth, that canvas studied sly and snaring art betray sweet Jenny's unsuspecting youth, cursing his perjured arts, dissembling smooth, our honoured virtue conscience all exiled, is there no pity, no relenting truth, points to the parents fondling o' their child, then paints a ruin made, and their distraction wild. But now the supper crowns their simple board, the hailsome perich, chief of Scotia's food, the soup their only hockey does afford, that yont the Hallands snugly choose or could. The dame brings forth, in complimental mood, to grace the lad her wool hand kebok fell, and daft he's pressed, and daft he cause it good. The frugal wifey garrulous will tell how twas a tome and old. Sin lint was I at the bell. The cheerful supper done with serious face, they round the ingle form a circle wide. The sire turns o'er with patriarchal grace, the big hall Bible and his father's pride. His bonnet reverently is laid aside, his layer half it swearing thin and bare, those strains at once did sweeten Zanglide. He wheels a portion with judicious care, and let us worship God, he says, with solemn air. They chant their atlas notes in simple guise, they tune their hearts by far the noblest aim. Perhaps in these wild warbling measures rise, or plaintive martyrs worthy of the name, or noble Elgin beats the heavenward flame, the sweetest fire of Scotia's holy lays. Compared with these, Italian trills are tame. The tickled deers no heartfelt raptures raise, nay unison hey they with our Creator's praise. The priest-like father reads the sacred page, how Abraham was the friend of God and high, or Moses bade eternal warfare wage with Amalek's ungracious progeny, or how the royal bard did groaning lie beneath the stroke of heaven's avenging ire, or Job's pathetic plaint and wailing cry, or rapt Isaiah's wild seraphic fire, or other holy seers that tune the sacred lyre. Perhaps a Christian volume is a theme, how guiltless blood for guilty man was shed, how he who bore in heaven the second name had not on earth whereon to lay his head, how his first followers and servants sped, the precept sage they wrote to many a land, how he, who lone in Patmos banished, saw in the sun a mighty angel stand, and heard great Babylon's doom pronounced by heaven's command. Then kneeling down to heaven's eternal king, the saint, the father, and the husband praise. Hope springs exulting and triumphant wing, that thus they all shall meet in future days, there ever bask in uncreated rays, no more to sigh or shed the bitter tear, together hymning their Creator's praise. In such society, yet still more dear, where circling time moves round in an eternal sphere. Compared with this, how poor religion's pride, in all their pomp of method and of art, when men display to congregation wide devotions every grace, except the heart. The power and sense, the pageant will desert, the pompous strain, the sacerdotal stole. But happily, in some cottage far apart, may hear, with pleased, the language of the soul. And in his book of life, the inmates poor and roll. Then homeward all take off their several way. The youngland cottagers retire to rest. The parent pair their secret homage pay, and proffer up to heaven the warm request that he who stills the raven's clamorous nest and decks a lily fair in flowery pride would in the way his wisdom sees the best for them and for their little ones provide, but chiefly in their hearts with grace divine preside. From scenes like these, old Scotia's grandeur springs, that makes her loved at home, revered abroad. Princes and lords are but the breath of kings, an honest man's the noblest work of God. 
and certes in fair virtue's heavenly road the cottage leaves the palace far behind. What is a lording's pomp? A cumbrous load, disguising off the wretch of humankind, studying arts of hell in wickedness refined. O Scotia, my dear, my native soil, for whom my warmest wish to heaven is sent, long may thy hardy sons of rustic toil be blessed with health and peace and sweet content. And oh, may heaven their simple lives prevent from luxury's contagion we can vile. Then, however crowns and coronets be rent, a virtuous populace may rise the while and stand a wall of fire around their much-loved isle. O thou who poured the patriotic tide that streamed through Wallace's undaunted heart, who dared to nobly stem tyrannic pride, or nobly die, the second glorious part, the patriot's God peculiarly thou art, his friend, inspirer, guardian and reward. O never, never Scotia's realm desert, but still the patriot and the patriot bard in bright succession raise her ornament and guard.